Alright, in this video we're going to talk about finding the least common multiple. Um, and I'm going to do a couple different problems with numbers and then with variables as well. So the basic idea with least common multiples, um, <clears throat> or excuse me, the least common multiple of however many terms you have um, is basically the following. What you need to do is you have to factor everything down first. So if you've forgotten how to factor a number, feel free to take a look at my website. I have some videos about factoring numbers using a factor tree. But in this example, we'll just go ahead and cut to the chase. 25 you can write as 5 times 5, which I'm going to write as 5 squared. 100 you can write as 4 times 25. Well, you can write 4 as 2 squared. And then again, you can write the 25 as 5 squared. And then to write 18, that's 3 times 6. And then I can break up 6 as 2 times 3. So I can write this as 2 to the first times 3 squared, equivalently 2 times 9. And now to find the least common multiple of these things, it's not too bad. Basically what you do is I'll look, I'll just kind of move left to right. So I see that there's a 5 in my first part. I see that there's a 5 in the second part, but there's no 5 in the third part. That's okay. Basically now what you do is you look at the powers on the 5, and you take the highest power that you see. Well, I see a 5 to the second power here. I see a 5 to the second power here. So 5 to the second power is the largest power that I see. And then I simply just keep moving left to right. So the next number that I come across as a base, we'll call 5 the base here, is a 2. Well here I see a 2 to the second power. And I see a 2 to the first power. Again, I take the larger of those two numbers, which is going to be 2 to the second power. Keep moving left to right. Well I've already accounted for the 5. I've already accounted for the 2. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll look at the 3. Well, there's no other 3's in there, so 3 to the second is the largest power. And that is going to be my least common multiple of 25, 118. And if you needed to, you could multiply these back out. You would get 5 times 5 is 25, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, so 25 times 4 is 100. 100 times 9 would be... 900. That's the smallest number that both 25, 100, and 18 will all divide into evenly. Okay, so now we're simply going to use the same idea on these other problems. So if it's variables, it's the exact same idea. I see an x to the second in my first part. I see an x to the fifth in my other part. Again, the least common multiple, you take the, the larger of the numbers. So x to the fifth, that'll get rid of my x's, or not get rid of them, but it will account for them. I've got a y to the third and a y to the first power. Well, the larger of those is to the third power, so I'll pull out a y to the third. Then I have z to the fourth and z to the second. Well, the bigger number is z to the fourth, so that would be the least common multiple. x to the fifth, y to the third, z to the fourth. If stuff is in parentheses, it's the same idea. You have to ask yourself in this case, though, are things already factored down? And this is kind of a basic question. Are things as factored, or have you factored them completely? Um, like in our very first example, 25, 118, those were not factored completely. So that's the very first thing we did was we factored these things down. My second example, everything is already factored. In this third example, things are already factored as well. I've just thrown in something with parentheses just to illustrate, well, it's the same idea. So I see an x plus 1 in parentheses to the third power. I see an x plus 1 in parentheses to the fourth power. Again, I pull out the larger of those two numbers. So I'll have x plus 1 to the fourth power. I see a w to the first power in my first part. There's no w's in the second one, so you could think about it as being a w to the zero power. So I'll pull out a w to the first power. I have a y to the third power, 
but only a y to the second power here. Again, I'll keep the bigger number, or y to the third. And lastly, I've got z to the fifth, z to the sixth. The larger of those two numbers is to the sixth power, and that's what I'll keep. That, again, will be my least common multiple. Okay? And if there had been three terms, maybe we'll do one real quick. Same idea as with our numbers. You just keep picking out, for each variable, you keep pulling out the largest power. All right, suppose now we want to find the least common multiple. Suppose we have x squared plus 5x plus 6. Suppose we have x squared plus 4x plus 4. Let's suppose I have an x plus 2 to the fourth power. And then also I have an x plus 5. Okay, so these are my three separate things. I've got my x squared plus 5x plus 6, x squared plus 4x plus 4, and then I have my x plus 2 to the fourth power and an x plus 5 term. Okay, on this one you have to be careful. Again, it goes back to the same um, idea here at the very beginning with numbers. You have to make sure that things are factored as much as possible. Well, you can actually factor x squared plus 5x plus 6 as x plus 2 times x plus 3. And once you have linear terms, those won't factor any further. The same thing with x squared plus 4x plus 4. You can actually factor that as x plus 2 times x plus 2, but I can write x plus 2 times x plus 2 as x plus 2 squared. And I like to write it this way because, again, I see this idea of looking for things in parentheses to the smallest power. And the third term I gave um, was already factored. So sorry about the weird lighting here. My camera's kind of crazy today. Okay, so, but basically now we just do the same idea that we had been doing before. I see an x plus 2 to the first power. I see an x plus 2 to the second power. I see an x plus 2 to the fourth power. Well, the largest of those numbers is x plus 2 to the fourth power. Then I see an x plus 3 to the first power. No x plus 3's in the middle. No x plus 3's on the last part. So that means I'll keep an x plus 3 to the first power. So I've taken care of an x plus 2. I've taken care of x plus 3's. Again, I've already taken care of the x plus 2's. I've already taken care of the x plus 2's. Oh, well, there's also an x plus 5 to the first power. So I need to keep that as well. And again, that would be my least common multiple. So finding least common multiples is going to be important um, when you have to, for example, add and subtract fractions that involve... Um, these these polynomials. Suppose you had to add these two things together. So 1 over x squared plus 4x plus 4 and then 1 over x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay. So what you're going to have to do is get common denominators and the way you're going to get common denominators is basically you're going to figure out the least common multiple of these two things on the bottom. So the stuff that we're doing is really um, kind of prerequisite, very important material for adding and subtracting, um, basically fractions when there's not only numbers involved. So I hope these examples make some sense. If you need to see some more free math videos, just hop over to my website. Um, I've got all kinds of stuff on there. Um, there's a section on the left involving just algebra problems, so if that's what you're interested in, just hop on over there. If you have any questions, send me an email. I'll be, tr I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can.